Espanol for pretty woman. It was very spiritual, like waves. Absolutely. But remember, this radio station could disappear. The voice of un... We interrupt your programming with a message from the State Department. All bridges and some roads in the Vice City metropolitan area have been closed because of a severe weather warning. Meteorologists are tracking Hurricane Hermione, which has devastated five Caribbean islands and is heading for Vice City. More updates soon. You can listen to this radio station. Now back to pressing issues. Shouldn't we give out the phone number? Like I tell the children at the library I volunteer at, look it up yourself. No, you can't go to the bathroom and stop crying. That's good advice. Now back to pressing issues. Welcome back to Pressing Issues with me, Maurice Chavez. On our panel, we got the secessionist lunatic John F. Hickory, liberal rich kid Callum Crayshaw, and neo-fascist congressman Alex Rupp. Gentlemen, welcome back. Let's start with you, Mr. Hickory. Why the F? For Florida. I'm a patriot. I've even got an orange grove tattooed all over my groin. Excellent. But back to the matter at hand. Public safety. How do we get guns under control in this city? By giving everyone hope, a dream of a better tomorrow, by encouraging people to grow their own root vegetables. What's the satisfaction of holding a gun in your hand when you could be holding a hoe, planting seeds in a peasant village? Keep your hoes and seeds to yourself. We don't need gun control. If you read the Constitution, it's a sacred document that should not be changed. Under our Constitution, women couldn't vote, but the liberals come in crying crocodile tears. We need to get scaremongers and non-believers men like you, Chavez, under control. I've got a good mind to have your funding removed. We don't get any funding. Yeah, exactly. Well, good. <laughs> you won't see a penny out of me. You've got to stop spreading these lies or I'll whip you myself. I'm not afraid. The Constitution asserts a man's right to bear arms and arm bears and all points in between. Whoever heard of a gun or a bear causing problems? This is all cocky pop or whatever that word is. It keeps the place safe. Trouble is caused by unemployment and unemployment comes from poor economic performance and lazy people. If you had a job, would you steal a car? Of course not. And if you had a high-rise condo, a mistress, and a seat on the board, would you run around graffitiing your name all over town and making a nuisance of yourself, spinning on your back and popping and locking and... Not a hope. It's simple. If you don't have a job, starve. Get out of my constituency by force if necessary and starve. That is quite simple. Are you really saying that? Of course I am. Vice City is a growing city. Of course, there are going to be some growing pains, but what I tell people is this. Gather up your life savings, buy yourself a piece of swamp, drain it, and get rid of the damn wildlife. Then apply for planning permission. Pretty soon, you could have your own retirement community or resort destination holiday place. You can start making money out of the boom, the shrub-inspired boom, and enjoy the kind of things sensible people have. Personal bodyguards, massive fences, and a bigger collection of guns than the other guy. It stands to reason. No, 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 no! Keep them out of here! We do not want any more old folks! If there are any old people listening, go back to your homes. Florida does not want you. Please, die somewhere else. What's wrong with Nevada or Kansas? We want a river. We need a river. The Freedom River. And what about the other crimes? It seems car crime, fashion crime, drugs, everything is on the rise. Absolutely. Of course it is. When I was in Uganda, people were poor, but they were happy. The more you have, the less you have. And that's kind of what I'm all about. There's satisfaction in spending all day weaving a basket rather than just buying one at the store. At one point in Uganda, I saw a great lake of sand and a massive speaking dog. It was a dog of love, not of hate. It was a spirit journey. What are you talking about? I'm talking about hopes, dreams, the magic of television, especially public television. Puppets can say what men cannot. Yes, but how will that stop people taking baseball bats and pounding the living crap out of each other as I saw in a mother's PTA group meeting recently? Baseball is our national sport, our national pastime. Joining together as men in order to reward the act of running around in a circle. I will thank you not to take its name in vain, Chavez. I hate that spring training. Who do those guys think they are? Coming here and getting in the way, showing us no respect, drinking our orange juice and seducing our women folk. Train in your own home, mister. Our national game down here, my friend, is digging. Digging a big ditch, a ditch of hope which will flood into a river of freedom. 
So far, we've dug 17 feet. We're almost free, almost, when we are floating away in the Caribbean Sea, free to run things our way, singing Kumbaya in the sunshine. No school, no tax, free barbecue and pinball for everyone. Sophisticated entertainment. Yes, well, what about the little guy? What about the guy who is standing there saying, I like being part of America. I like it a lot. I get public radio. I can hear Maurice Chavez. I own a small one-bedroom home, a business selling flowers to people stuck in traffic, three or four radios all turned on to BCPR, a dog, 15 ice cubes. But I don't feel safe. I'm worried about gangs. Gangs are a myth put out by the liberal elite to patronize and demean the working man. I mean, what kind of right-minded youth from a poorer background is going to spend his time stealing things and posing in silly clothes when he could be getting ahead with a minimum wage job and making his parent proud? The dream of America is to live in a duplex and share a yard. Why would anyone want to threaten that great future? Answer me that and I'll show you a green dog. And speaking for the underdog, the foundation I set up with my trust fund, we believe gangs are a valid expression of a people's identity, a grouping, a community within a community. Gangs are a way to be noticed in the boxy suburbs. You scream out. Rather than urinate at the edge of your camp like a proud native, we spray paint our names on the walls of the mall to ward off predators. And that's supposed to terrify people? No, no. We believe passionately in nonviolent solutions to life's problems. Gangs have to learn to love, to be inclusionary. We'd award badges to good gangs and give bad gangs a silly hat to wear. It would give people something to feel a part of. Kill with kindness, not a garden tool. Yes, but what about the guy getting beaten up on the street? Or the man having his motorcycle stolen? What about him? Or her? Some of the best bikers are really women. Anyone can join our group. This is about poor people getting together. But your father owns half of Florida. How are you part of the working class? Like I said, possessions are not important at all. I'll pick up a hitchhiker in my convertible any day. The other day, I picked up a young woman and we discussed a non-violent solution to war. We called it peace. Your father is a great man. He's done more for the arms trade in this state than anyone else, myself included. And you shame him with the socialist, jiggery, pokery hoot nanny. America needs hope. Not songs that are supposed to send food to the poor. Songs will get you nowhere. This country needs something to aim for, like being rich and laughing at poor people. Or being in government and laughing at the electorate. Now, now, Mr. Shrub, let's not make this personal. I appreciate your attempt to press the point, but we are here to press the issue. My city is in trouble. And I think we're not really providing any serious solutions. So far, we've got secessionism, rearing its ugly head for the first time in a century and a half. We've got ignore it, and we've got give everyone a flower. You're all a, a little unrealistic, yes? Nah, no, exactly. Come on, now. So I can just have one there, my friend. Maurice? Not to say over-opinionated and moronic, Mr. Crayshaw, how do we stop people running amok in the city with machine guns and heavy artillery? You've got to give a man a chance. Prisons are overflowing with wasted potential. Make the guilty men innocent once more. Free them from themselves. How? How on earth do you do that? Well, um, you could let them off. Marvelous. Great. That's a sensible plan. Then they wouldn't be guilty anymore. We've been doing that for years, you idiot. How do you think we keep prison costs down? They ain't by magic or cooking the books. We save that for education. But, as in most things, we in government are saving money so that you don't have to. When we spend less money on services, more goes to administration salaries and expenses, which helps make lives a lot less difficult for everybody. It's about sharing. Sharing your taxes out amongst the select few. That's why I worked so hard at school, so I could reap the rewards now. Mm, I thought you worked hard at school because the other kids laughed at you and called you a square. But that's a damn lie. They called me wet fart. They called me the bat because my voice didn't break until I was 19. So, Mr. Shrub, I take it you don't believe in regulation. I believe in giving people a chance, not tying them down with lots of needless regulations. The fact is, business is run by moral people who won't do anything illegal or try to get rich quickly. But since you got elected, Vice City has been characterized by a government who cut aid to the poor, offered tax breaks to the rich, and pay people to dump toxic waste near schools. Yes, we've made a lot of progress. And up on Capitol Hill, 
you were instrumental in pushing through a bill allowing the manufacture and sale of giggle cream, a dessert with potential lethal consequences. Uh, not true. Only 23 people have died, and several of them probably deserved it. So, with people being set such a bad example by big business, how are they supposed to respect each other, to act safely in society? And how are they policed by a demoralized and underfunded police force? Well, I'm afraid that's apparently quite a difficult question, but my solution is easy. I'm going to talk for a long time about a subject not in any way related, and pretty soon people will forget all about it. I'll remind people that I have a great haircut, and that under my stewardship, Vice City has had on average 15% better weather than before, while crime rates only go up if you don't turn the graph upside down. Turn it upside down, and they have halved. Halved! Under me, Alex Shrub. Vote Shrub for president, and you'll have a friendly face in the White House. A man you can trust. A local man who likes golf and laughing and photo opportunities at your store or place of business. Just send me a letter. I'll send you an automated photocopied response. We call it democracy, and that's where the money goes. Now, just a jo minute. Don't interrupt. Let me finish. But you're not... But this man won't let me speak. You, Shorty, shut up and let me speak. I'm taller than him, ladies and gentlemen, by at least three inches, which means I'm a lot more respectable looking. Everyone knows politicians lie and steal and cheat, but at least with me in charge, you know I look good and I have a very supercilious manner. Besides which, I've been abroad, and I prefer it here because I'm a man of the people. Vote shrub. You'll get richer, and you won't feel guilty about it. Enough! We're running out of time, and you completely failed to answer the question. I'm a professional. That's my job. <sighs> and Mr. Hickory, what about you? All right. These problems are typical of what happens with an open border to the north. The state is filling up with trash. People who can't tell the difference between a swamp and a marsh. Guys who don't know the first thing about the legality of marrying within the family. That's why we need a river. People, I'm telling you, pick up your spades, go into your garden, start digging as deep and as far as you can. Pretty soon the whole state will be flooded and ruined, and then they'll have to leave. We must build a moat to the north or they will come down and ruin this great state. And, Mr. Hickory, were you born in Florida? <laughs> what a stupid question of all the cheek. Were you? Of course not. No one's been born in Florida since 1877, but I've been here for five years, which is a very long time. Yes, it is. A very long time. Almost as long as this show. Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Pressing Issues with me, Maurice Chavez, presiding over some of the least informed debate on the radio. In this episode of Pressing the Issue, we had Alex Shrub, Callum Crayshaw, and John Florida Hickory discussing safety. I guess you've all got to make up your own minds. Should we be as wet as fish or a corrupt money-grabbing thief? Gentlemen, I feel we really got somewhere, and that Vice City and people everywhere know a lot more than they did before we began. And now, over to Jonathan and Melissa to talk to you about public radio in your area. You're listening to VCPR, the radio station for disoriented and unrealistic college professors who wear fuzzy sweaters and find everything terribly interesting. I'm Michelle Montanius. And I'm Jonathan Freeloader. Public radio is very important. You may have heard my recent hour-long story about my hike in the park. That was fascinating and very important for everyone, even the blind. Play a selection, Jonathan. I think this is the part where I came to the big tree. I almost felt like I was there. You won't get this kind of nauseating detail on commercial radio. VCPR is 100% commercial free. Absolutely nothing interrupts your enjoyment of our fine programming and ability to tackle the important things like Jonathan's Walk in the Park. But we need you. Think of yourself as a member of this station, except you aren't allowed in the doors. That's an important metaphor for life. Yes, how wonderful would it be to own an hour of this radio station? We just got an enormous pledge from Farewell Ranch. That's great. Farewell Ranch is a great place to take your loved one. Just dial 866-9-BURY-ME. Remember, VCPR is commercial and interest-free. Donate your money now. Let's get back to pressing issues. Thank you, guys. So, we're back on pressing issues. Just one of many fine shows you'll hear if you have the patience to listen to public radio. Although thanks to the many awards we have won, Pressing Issues has extended playtime and is the number one rated show in the Vice City area. I'm your very entertaining host, Maurice Chavez, a man climbing the broadcasting ladder at a rate of six knots. Six years ago, 
I was a clown, and now I'm a success. <laughs> Think about it. Imagine where I could be in 10 years. I could achieve anything. Anyway, morality. What is it? Why do we need it? Our ancestors, shortly after discovering fire, built tools to beat each other over the head and discover how to make meat to celebrate with afterwards. Then Columbus came over, shut down the pilgrim discos. Why? All very confusing if you ask me. And you did. And I asked myself, that is a perfect subject for a region-wide discussion show, which is very lucky because I happen to host one. To discuss the subject of morality, we have firebrand preacher Pastor Richards, the head of the Pastor Richards Salvation Statue Organization, a group which plans to raise enough money to build a statue of Pastor Richards himself. We also have John Brown, leader of Moms Against Popular Culture, or MAPC, or is it MAPS? Map K, uh, I don't know. We're deep in acronym hell right now, or is it purgatory? And finally, we have Barry Stark, author of the book, As Nature Intended. He's the editor of Vice City's Naturist News, and is working feverishly, it says here, to bring more nude recreation to Vice City. To protect the dignity of our other panelists, we place Mr. Barry Stark behind a divider. I'm naked back here. It's my right as a person. <laughs> yes. Let's start with the obvious, yes? Is it moral to be naked? Yes, you can't stop me. Well, I'm a mother, so I have to deal with this issue every day. My adorable kids have learned that it's wrong to be naked. When it's bath time, they know to put on a bathing costume. That's, that's also the reason there are no mirrors in my house. Nudity leads to bad, naughty things. Maurice, if I may interrupt, I haven't worn clothes since 1982. Clothes are seriously unnatural. Didn't you guys learn anything from the 60s? I had a revelation when I was in holiday in Germany. I had always felt very constricted. Then it hit me like a slippery fish. Clothes are plain wrong. When you're born, you're not wearing any clothes. When you die, you're not wearing any clothes. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. What if you die at work? What if an enormous piece of machinery falls on you while you're working? Clothes lead to immorality. Nudity stops people from fighting. Have you seen an issue of National Geographic lately? People around the world are nude. You don't want to shoot a machine gun or a howitzer or a flamethrower if you're naked. It could burn or scold in quite a personal fashion, quite frankly. Have you been to the zoo? Animals are naked. If everyone were naked, there'd be no war. Everyone's complaining about crime and the theft of cars in the city. No one's ever stolen my car. No one's ever pickpocketed me. They've never even tried. Well, that's because you're a degenerate loony. If the police were naked, it would set a great example to everyone. You can direct traffic and eat donuts entirely in the buff. Maurice, this kind of immoral behavior is exactly why I'm building the Pastor Richard Salvation statue. Noah had an ark, Texans had the Alamo, and I am building a highly fortified structure in my image. Simple. This 50-story statue will be able to deflect alpha, gamma, and beta radiation. The day is coming, and coming soon, where the artificial suns will rain down to punish the degenerate of this city, but you can save yourself. The Pastor Richard Salvation Statue will be a completely self-sufficient community. We have canned food rations, private living quarters, and enough supplies to survive happily the predicted 40,000 years of nuclear winter. In phase two, and with funding from NASA, we will equip this massive statue with rockets. So when the poopy hits the proverbial fan, we will load up the statue with all of the people who have saved themselves through generous donations, blast into space, and colonize Saturn with a race of morally correct, affluent people ruled by me. Hmm, will there be naked people? No, turd brain. It's morally corrupt people like you we're shielding ourselves from. Liberals, degenerates, the Welsh. They're the ones responsible for the nightmare Vice City is today. The crime in the streets, the parties, the children born out of wedlock to a future of hopelessness. Anyone who does not agree with me is mentally sick and should be shot, I'm afraid to say. We need to build a place to escape these transgressions. Whew, <laughs> that's extreme stuff, Pastor. But we'll leave amateur eugenics for a minute and ask our other panelists. Jan, you're a mom, so you know everything. What is your thought on all this? And do you think Pastor Richards stole his ideas from a movie or book? Well, yes, I am a mom. My kids are very special. So special, they go to special classes. Now, I, I teach my kids history to give them perspective. Last night, I was telling them about how Magellan sailed around the Strait of Magellan and met some friendly natives that gave him supplies. 
Um, then he had to kill all of them. And that's an important lesson about life. If you look at nature, you'll see many species that eat their children to protect them. Th this is especially true of hamsters. It's about putting the family first. That